The dolly zoom, or vertigo zoom, is a camera technique made popular by cameraman Ehrman Roberts in the movie Vertigo. And it's been used subsequently in a lot of movies like Jaws, Goodfellas, Lord of the Rings, and many others. It's a great way to create a sense of anxiety, or unease, or distortion of reality, or just to make a cool looking camera shot. The new DJI Mavic Zoom actually has a dolly zoom feature built in, so you can do this automatically. However, I don't have the budget for all that newfangled stuff, so I'm gonna show you how to do it on an old school Mavic Pro. And I'm gonna show you how to do it in Adobe Premiere without ever touching After Effects. There are two basic ways that you can make a subject larger or smaller in your frame. The first is with an adjustable lens. You zoom in, subject is larger, you zoom out, the subject is smaller. The second way is by actually moving the camera. You move the camera closer, the subject is larger. You move the camera farther away, the subject is smaller. This, by the way, is called a dolly shot, moving the camera directly forward toward the subject or back away from the subject. Now, an interesting thing happens when you do a dolly shot and a zoom shot at the same time. You can use one of those to make the subject larger while you're using the other to make the subject smaller. The end result is that the subject stays the same size in the frame, but reality seems to distort around them. When used appropriately, it can convey a sense of realization, fear, or just plain weirdness. But it can also be used just for simple visual interest because it looks really cool. Now typically, the way you accomplish this is by zooming at the same time that you're dollying. So you dolly in and zoom out, or you zoom in and you dolly out. However, you can't really do this with a Mavic Pro because it doesn't have the same kind of zoom feature that a video camera would have. However, we can fake this in post-production using cropping and keyframes to create the effect of zooming in while we're dollying out. I recently took out my Mavic Pro to try this firsthand, and here's what I came back with. Okay, I'm loving this technique. I definitely need to use this more. Now, I'm not gonna give you the full tutorial on how I did this in Adobe Premiere Pro, but here are the quick points of how I did it. First, I look at the footage and I chop out some stable clips of the drone moving toward or away from the camera. It doesn't matter a lot which because you can always reverse it. The only time it would matter is if you have subjects moving in the background like a person walking or a car driving that would look weird going backwards. I'll start at the point of the clip where the subject is largest, either at the beginning or at the end, and I'll set a keyframe there, and I will use guides to kind of mark the outline of where the subject is, so I can use that as a reference for the other points. Then I'll add a keyframe at the other end of the clip where it's farthest from the camera, and then I'll zoom it in and move it around until it's right about where I want it within those guides. Now drones don't move perfectly, so there are gonna be some adjustments along the way. Usually what I'll do is I'll add a keyframe right in the middle of the clip, and then I'll adjust that where it needs to be. And then I'll add keyframes kind of at regular intervals in between, and at each one just kind of keep adjusting it. If there's a spot where the drone wobbles, you might have to add a couple extra keyframes there. But for each one, you're basically zooming and sizing and moving it around to just match the guides that you set so it all matches the way it was in the beginning. Now at that point, you should be able to play it through and find that it's pretty stable. You might have some tweaking and adjusting to do, but it shouldn't be too bad. If worse comes to worse, you can always throw a warp stabilizer on it and clean it up a little bit that way as well. And that is how you create a really slick dolly zoom in Adobe Premiere without having to use After Effects at all. If you tried this out, be sure to post a comment with a link to your video so I can check it out. I'm James Archer, and I make videos about how to make better videos. If you like to make videos and you'd like to make better videos, you should check out some of my other videos about how to make better videos, and they might help you make better videos too.